Uh, hello everyone. This is the third video in our low-cost DIY digital beamforming series using the ADALM Pluto software-defined radio. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, I really recommend that you start there. In that video, we describe the purpose, the setup, and the equations to create a two-element digital beamformer. And in that video, uh, we use phase shifters to form the beam, uh, but we could have used time delays instead. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to use time delays uh, to create the beam. And honestly, it's, it's a little bit weirder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so we'll do a couple of different setups. We'll somewhat fail on each of them, but then we'll figure it out. We'll put it all together, and then we'll be able to see the impact of using time delays versus phase delays. Um, and all this is important to understand in digital beamforming because time delays are commonly used instead of phase shifting because time delays can often handle wider bandwidth signals a little bit better. So if you'll recall, this is the setup that we've been using. We have two receive antennas and one transmit antenna. And by controlling the delay of the receive antennas, we can focus their beam in a certain direction. So in the previous videos, we've calculated that delay and then used a phase shifter to implement it. And how do we know what phase shift delay corresponds to what angle? Well, we did some simple calculations like this. You might remember this slide from the first video. So we've calculated the time delay that we need to shift one of the receive antennas by. And for these conditions, uh, that was 74.4 picoseconds. And then we converted that time delay into a phase delay. So that gave us the 62 degrees of phase delay shown there. Then we implemented the phase shifter using a simple Python program and of course, Pluto. And, and that all worked as expected. We could shift the phase of the elements and accurately point the receive beam. So here's that same setup, but redrawn a bit and with some key frequencies placed in there. So we generated a 200 kilohertz baseband signal on the transmitter then upconverted that to 2.3 gigahertz. And that signal was transmitted from our little stubby antenna. And based on the angle from that antenna to our two receive antennas, there was some delay on one of the receive antennas. And that's what we calculated on the previous slide. And we said that for a 20 degree angle here that we would need a 62 degrees phase shift. So we put that phase shift into the receive two path. Uh, and we indeed did see the peak gain of the system occur when that delay was set to 62 degrees. So that all worked out as expected, and it confirmed that our equations were correct. And when we calculated that phase shift, we also calculated what that time delay would be. Um, so just like phase delay, there's a couple places where we could instead put the time delay into our system here. Uh, oftentimes, we might put that delay directly on the RF signal coming in, uh, and that's exactly what we would do for analog beamforming. Or we could put that time delay after the digitizer, and that's what we would do for digital beamforming. Well, we could also put the delay in the LO or between the mixer and the ADC, uh, but let's just focus on the two highlighted spots for now. So if we put that delay in front of the mixer, which is analog beamforming again, then the time delay we need to apply is just the time delay that we had calculated earlier. And that was 74.4 picoseconds, again, for the conditions uh, on that particular slide. And since we can't go backwards in time, we apply that delay to RX1, not RX2. Uh, and this works great. And there are products out there like the ADAR4002 that will do this for you very nicely. But we want to do digital beamforming. So we need to put the delay after the ADC. So here's where it starts to get a little interesting. If you remember when we did the phase delays back in the first part of the video series, we calculated the phase shift at RF, but then we applied that phase shift at baseband. And there was a little bit of mathematical justification for why we were able to do this, but we really didn't question it too much. It, it just sort of worked out when we built our digital beamformer uh, with phase shifters. But if you think about it, it is a little bit odd because we had calculated a phase shift at 2.3 gigahertz, but then applied that phase shift digitally after the ADC. So it's not at 2.3 gigahertz, um, but instead it's at the baseband frequency, which was only 200 kilohertz. So it, it's much, much lower than the RF frequency. So the question is, can we just do that same thing again with time delay? Well, we can certainly try it out. Uh, and for our first pass, it's a reasonable thing to try. And we have our digital beamformer all set up for it. So, I mean, it's no, it's no trouble to try it. But it's going to turn out that this only ends up being half of the solution. Uh, but again, let's try it and we'll see what we get. Then we can come back and think about this a bit more and see what else we might need to do. And we'll also uncover a better mathematical explanation as to why our phase shifter calculations worked out so well, even at baseband frequencies. So let's try this out now with our Pluto beamformer. Okay, and here is our new Python program where we're gonna look at some time delay functions. This Python script is located on my GitHub site, uh, github.com slash Johncraft. 
you can find it there. In previous videos, we've gone over this script quite a bit, so we don't need to rehash that. I encourage you uh, to especially watch that first video before you watch this video. The major change here is we now need to add in a time delay function. And so that's going to be in this function here, uh, time delayer. And this time delay function allows us to do either a phase delay or a time delay because it'll be interesting to compare them both. So if we want to do a phase delay, we just do the phase delay in exactly the same way that we did in the first part of this series. So we're doing it exactly the same way. And if we want to do a time delay, we'll need to use a digital filter in order to do that. And there's a great example of how to do this on pysdr.org. This is a fantastic website. I don't know if I've talked about it before on this channel, but that's for, it's uh, from uh, Dr. Mark Littman. He does, a, he does a fantastic explanation of digital signal processing and communications fundamentals. And then he gives you Python examples and then oftentimes a Pluto example as well. So it's just a, a fantastic resource. It's very readable, very understandable, but um, it really does a, does a great job of explaining everything. Anyway, um, he's got in there a section on, on doing some of these delays. So I, I copied his code. I modified it a little bit for our case, um, but this is, this is what it looks like here. We just implement this digital filter and it's gonna shift, shift our waveforms in time by a fraction of the sampling rate. So we can just give it some time delay in picoseconds and it will shift the waveform for us. So that's pretty much it. That's the only major change made to this Python script. We just added that time delay function. Then when we step through all of our different steering angles, we can choose to either do a phase delay, which is what we're gonna do in this data set here. This is the, uh, the peak sum data set, or we can do a time delay, which is what we're gonna do here in the peak sum time data set. And then we can plot them both and compare them. So again, we're gonna plot phase delay, which is what we've been doing up until now all the time. And then we're gonna plot only doing the time shift on one, on one waveform. And you can see from the camera that uh, the transmit antenna is directly in front of the array. So this is the mechanical bore site direction. So, so we should expect to see everything centered at zero. Let's run this now. Okay, so this is interesting, uh, maybe a little bit disappointing, but um, so in blue here is what our beam pattern looks like if we're using phase delays. So this is what we expect. This is what we've seen before. This, this is good. In orange is the same thing except with time delays. And you can see that our time delay, when we sweep the time delay in picoseconds uh, across all possible steering angles, we don't see any difference at all in the response of the signal. Okay, so that's a little bit uh, discouraging. We, we sort of took a quick guess to see if, oh, maybe we can just move the time delay after the ADC and, and, and maybe things will work out like how they did for phase delay. Uh, that guess was wrong. Uh, things did not work out like that. So let's go back to the whiteboard for a bit. Uh, let's think about what's happening here and we'll make one small change here and then we should see it working. So let's do that now. Okay, so we just tried this in our digital beamformer and we basically saw no change in the signal amplitude. So we're not changing the direction of the antenna at all. And honestly, the reason for this might be a little bit hard to intuitively discern. So let's back up for a minute and put some equations around exactly what is happening here. Uh, these equations might seem a little complex at first, but really they're not too bad uh, as long as we just step through them kind of one by one. And very quickly, I think we'll see how this digital baseband time delay works and then also what we need to add in order to fix our time delay beamformer project. And as a bonus, we'll also see the derivation for why we can apply the same phase shift at baseband that we do at RF. So uh, hopefully this will be interesting to you. So let's start putting some equations down to describe our system. First, we have a 200 kilohertz baseband signal. And for us, this is just a complex sine wave, but generally this will be some digital comm signal or radar pulse or, or something like that. Uh, so we just give it the generic name of X of T. It's some time varying manipulation of sines and cosines that give us some data. Okay, so we have our baseband signal X of T, and now we're going to upconvert that with a mixer. Uh, mathematically, this is just a complex multiplication with a natural exponential function. And it looks like this. Uh, so if that exponential term is positive, it's gonna mean that we shift up in frequency. And if it's negative, as we'll see shortly on the receive side, then we'll shift down in frequency. So the end result of this is just X of T multiplied by that natural exponential function. And this gives us our 2.3 gigahertz plus 200 kilohertz waveform that we've been using. So all that is pretty straightforward so far. 
And as I've drawn it here, that transmit waveform is going to hit Rx1 first. And that will appear as x of t times e to the j2 pi fc times t. And then that signal is going to hit Rx1's mixer. So that is just the multiplication by the natural exponential of minus j2 pi fc times t. We use the negative again because we are moving down in frequency. For Rx1, this works out great because x of t times e to the j2 pi fc t times e to the negative j2 pi fc times t just ends up equaling x of t. Uh, and that's what we want, our baseband signal. Okay, so that was easy. That's the Rx1 path. Now let's look at the Rx2 path. So when that transmit waveform hits Rx2, it will have some small time delay, delta t, in there. This is just the delay in our signal striking Rx2 from when it struck Rx1. And you can see what that equation looks like here. We just replace the t with a t plus delta t. Now, if we were doing analog beamforming, we would just instantly subtract out that delta t with an analog RF beamformer, and everything would work out great. But for our digital beamforming, you'll see that that delta t is going to stick with us all the way through. So the RX2 signal, with that time delay term in there, is going to hit the mixer, and it again gets multiplied by a complex exponential, and that's going to shift it down in frequency. But the result of that is a bit messier than what we saw for the Rx1 signal. There's actually two terms in there, and so let's consider each of them. The first term is the x of t plus delta t, and this is the baseband information, but shifted in time by delta t. That we can counteract with a time delay, and that time delay is going to just be set to negative delta t. And I'm using the actual values that we calculated earlier, just so you can see how they fit in here. So for that case where we had a 20 degree steering angle, we would set our delta t to a minus 74.4 picosecond delay. So that is the same time delay that we calculated at RF, but now we apply it to the baseband signal. Of course, the RX1 path would just be zero picoseconds because no shift is required there. So after that time delay on RX2, we are left with x of t times that exponential term. And that exponential term is a fixed constant. It's not a time varying signal. And in fact, it may look very familiar. And it should look familiar because it is exactly the phase shift that we calculated earlier. Delta phase equals two pi f times delta t. So this is just a fixed phase delay and it is equal to the phase delay that we already applied in the first video. So to counteract this term, we can just apply a phase shift, which you'll recall is just multiplying by the complex natural exponential function. And here's the values that we already calculated just so you can kind of see how they all fit in here. Okay, so this is very interesting and maybe a little bit unexpected, uh, but here's the summary. To do a time delay in the baseband digital signal, we must compensate for time, but we must also compensate for phase. And you can also see how if we just ignore the time delay, we end up with a phase only delay. So we actually derived both methods of delay here. Uh, this might make a little more sense if we can try it out with our setup. So let's go ahead now and we'll update our program to provide both a phase and a time delay. So let's go back to the Python program. And this is the exact same program that we had just run earlier. If we run this again, we're going to once again see that we don't see any change in the beam pattern for time delay in orange. But for the phase delay in blue, that looks like what it should. So we want to do both time delay and phase delay in one plot. So that's easy to do with the function the way I've constructed it. We just changed both of the arguments to true. So true in this argument means we're going to do phase delay. True in this argument means we're going to do time delay. And so now we, we're doing them both. And let's run that again. And so they're both correct now, but you can see that there's no difference now between doing phase delay and time delay. Let's try it over different steering angles and see if maybe that might uh, might bring out some difference between the phase and the time delay methods. So as we move this around, you can see that the peak is indeed tracking with the transmit antenna location, but that there's no difference between the phase and the time delay plots. So let's go back to the whiteboard and think about why we're not seeing any difference. Okay, so we just updated our program by adding phase shift into the time shift. And it seemed to work, but the problem was that it looked identical to doing it with a phase shift only. So why was that? Well, if you think about it, uh, that time shift for our very small two element array is going to be somewhere in the picoseconds that we need to apply. But the phase shift portion of it is going to create a delay on our 200 kilohertz baseband waveform that is in the microsecond range. So no wonder that the time shift didn't really matter. So here's a key takeaway. 
Time delay matters if you have enough elements in the array to make the time shift significant. We only have two elements, so that's not going to be very significant. But if we had thousands of elements in the array, then it would have an impact. Also, if we had a very large bandwidth, such that our phase delay at one frequency no longer gave us a nearly equivalent time delay at another frequency, then that would also be another reason to use time delays. And this can be a very significant issue, um, and it's an issue called beam squint. A beam squint is a shift in the focus of the beam across frequency, and it can be the result of using phase shifters instead of true time delays. The equation shown here will calculate the change in steering angle as the frequency is changed, um, and this is for a phase delay system. Uh, that delta theta is the undesired change in, of steering beam angle, theta zero is the intended beam angle, F sub zero is the carrier frequency, and F is the instantaneous frequency. For example, if we had a carrier frequency of 2.3 gigahertz, and the peak frequency deviation or instantaneous bandwidth of the signal was minus 500 megahertz, then the beam will move off the intended 45 degree beam angle by about 20 degrees. So that's very interesting, and I'm sure it works, but I'd love to be able to test it with our Python program and Pluto Beamformer. The problem is that 500 megahertz is way more than Pluto can do. But if we use smaller bandwidths, then the shift will be very hard for us to see. So let's change our conditions around a bit so that we can illustrate this principle with a simple setup. So instead of a 2.3 gigahertz carrier, I'm gonna change that to 300 megahertz. Okay, why 300 megahertz? Uh, the reason is, is because that is the lowest frequency directional antenna that I could find on Amazon. So that's why 300 megahertz. And I want to use a low frequency because I can only digitize a small bandwidth with, with Pluto. So the lower the frequency, the smaller F sub zero over F will be. And that will make the difference more apparent. So with that 300 megahertz carrier, let's look at a signal that is 10 megahertz away from there. So it is like 10 megahertz of instantaneous bandwidth. I'm also going to increase the target steering angle to 60 degrees as beam squint gets worse with increased steering angle. So if we have a carrier frequency of 300 megahertz and the peak frequency deviation is 10 megahertz, then the beam will move off the intended 60 degree beam angle by 3.1 degrees. And that's if we're using phase shifting only. But if we're using time delay, then we should not see any impact to the steering angle as we change the frequency. Let's go ahead and try that now. Okay, so first we're gonna to have to disassemble our setup so that we can connect those two new receive antennas. And I'm also disconnecting the transmitter. I'm not gonna use Pluto's transmitter. I'll show you next what I'm using for that, but I'll just use a separate battery powered synthesizer for that just because it'll give me a little more freedom to, to move around. And here are those new antennas. They are quite a bit bigger. They're lower frequency. They go down to 300 megahertz. That was the lowest directional type of antenna that I could find on Amazon. Uh, I, can put, I can put a link in the description if anyone's interested in their specs. And so I'm gonna hook up those antennas, one to receive one and the other one to receive two. And I'm gonna use those same little tweezer stands to hold the PCBs. I, I think those have worked out great. And now for the transmitter, I'm not gonna use Pluto's transmitter anymore. I'm gonna use this little battery powered synthesizer, the ERA micro synth. It's about 300 or $400. I, I'll put a link to it. Um, but it's very nice because it's battery powered. It can generate signals up to six gigahertz. I put a 500 megahertz low pass filter at the end of it. Then I connect it to just a radial antenna and I've uh, set the length on that to transmit well at 300 megahertz. And this is battery powered, so it's just a little battery powered uh, USB bank. Now I can set the frequency to uh, anything I want. So I'll set it here to 300 megahertz, increase the signal amplitude a little bit. And that's what I will use for the transmit source. So here's the setup of those two 300 megahertz directional receive antennas. I've moved to a bigger space in my basement and placed the antennas half a wavelength apart, which is 50 centimeters. And I'm setting the transmit source to 300 megahertz. Now this is the same frequency as Pluto's receive LO. So there is basically zero Hertz of instantaneous bandwidth now. So we should not expect to see any difference between the beam formed by the phase shifters only versus the beam formed by the time delay plus phase shifting. And you can see that as I walk back and forth, both beams are identical. There is no difference and that is what we'd expect. However, now I'll change this transmit bandwidth to 310 megahertz. And again, I'm leaving Pluto's LO frequency at 300 megahertz. 
So that gives 10 megahertz of effective bandwidth. Now, as I move away from mechanical boresight, you can see a difference in the peak of both beams. In the Python terminal, you can see each peak reported and the difference between the two peaks. Remember that we had calculated that this would be about three degrees at a steering angle of 60 degrees. And you can see that as I get to around 60 degrees, that the steering difference is indeed about three degrees. And as I return back to mechanical boresight, that difference becomes less and less until at mechanical boresight, it's zero degrees of difference. So I think that's about all we can do for time delay on our, on our simple two element digital beamformer. This video has ended up being much, much longer than I thought it was gonna be. I apologize for that. I hope it was interesting. If you stuck around this long, I, I applaud you. You must be very interested in, in digital time delay kinds of things. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section. I'll try to answer them or direct you to someone that, that might be able to answer them. Okay, thank you very much.